Okay. First of all, welcome. My name is Greg, and I'm going to walk you through how to set up an in on your home system, in my case, a Mac, self-hosted, and in a way I feel is very easy to do, and is also going to allow you to use Telegram and WhatsApp to use webhooks with a web webhook URL that um, sometimes causes others to have challenges, whether they're self-hosting on the cloud or if they're using an ends cloud hosting. It's usually easy to do it that way, but it's also a monthly cost to pay for those services. So this is a way you can use your home system, can have a dynamic IP address. All that is totally fine, and doing it this way is, is I found it to be very, very easy to do. So I'm going to walk you through it step by step. We're going to start with Cloudflare. Now, I register. I think it's an easy way to do it. You don't necessarily have to register your domain here to use their tunnel service. I just happen to do so. It's this, this, this domain here. And what you do is you go into zero trust here and you go into networks and you go to add a tunnel and you go to cl select Cloudflare and you can just name it whatever you want. In this case, we'll say in an end tunnel. We'll save the tunnel. And then it's going to, in this case, since I'm using a Mac, gives me instructions for the Mac, but if you're running Windows, there's a, a client you have to install and then it runs and it'll run all the time in the background. It keeps the tunnel active. If your IP address, your external IP address, public IP address changes, it'll make sure that's updated. So all that stuff happens automatically in the background. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this command here. I'm going to go to here and I'm going to paste it. All right. So it needs a password. All right. Installed successfully. Okay. Now, you can see here, I installed it, and this shows connected just a few moments after that. You can also confirm if I go back to tunnels on the website here, you can see it shows healthy here. This just indicates you've got a tunnel, it's healthy, everything's good to go. There are some other items within the tunnel I'm going to configure a little bit later. We're going to go ahead and do that. It's really the public host name, so I'll set that up later. But let's go ahead and move over to actually installing NNN using the Docker desktop client, and we'll go from there. So let me pull up this. So when you've got Docker Desktop installed, the Windows version looks very similar to this. I'm going to go ahead and I'll paste the, the specifics in the comments of this video. But essentially, there's a very specific in the terminal. You'll want to copy and paste some specific parameters in there. And it'll be based on a number of factors, obviously, that one of the variables is obviously going to be your domain address. The other ones I'll talk to you about one by one here in a moment. Okay, so here is what I'm pasting in, and essentially it's just a command you run in here. It's going to do several different things. This command is going to be creating a new container called NNN underscore container. This indicates the ports it's going to be using. It's a standard port configuration for this setup. Um, this is a very important piece that will be utilized, especially with Telegram. If, if you have it to use 5678, it won't work. Telegram, so this this kind of gets around that. So there's some magic that's done with Cloudflare and the tunnel system they've got. Obviously, you want to make sure it's secure, so HTTPS, and then time zone, and then this sets up a volume. So you can set it up prior to this manually, but if you don't have it already, then that will set one up for you. And the volume allows it basically to persist the data if you stop it or you, you need to, to create another container like this that has the consistent data. So we'll go ahead and hit enter here. All right. So Part of what it's doing also is I did not initially pull the image down, so it's going to go do that automatically as part of this. And then so it looks like it's done now, so I'm going to go and minimize this. And you can see here, here's the, and it, there's the image that it pulled, and here's the volume as well. So all these are associated together. You don't need to you know, know a lot of details about, about this, but, but just know that, that it's functional now. So if I click on this, what I can see now is... It is working. So I have this is just a setup. So I'm going to go ahead and this is just localhost, right? So localhost is great, but we want to make sure this also works with the domain address and using the tunnel and all that. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it now. I'll be back in a second for that configuration. Okay, so you can see here if I try to go to nnn.agenttestlab.com, it's not going to work at all. And that's because there's there's no uh, DNS entry for this. So we got to go back to Cloudflare here and we go into the actually we do this not through the normal clicking in here and adding a DNS entry. You'll see there's nothing listed here at all. We're going to actually go in through Zero Trust and Networks and then we go into the configuration here. 
And <clears throat> from here, public host name, we want to add one. We say NNN, and then it should just make the different domains available here. And then we say HTTP. Right. So it's a bit confusing, but here you actually do the public host name and you, you're going to indicate NNN agenttestlab.com, and this will be secured internally within your system though you're just going to be using http and then localhost and then 5678 is the port as we had indicated before so i'm going to go ahead and save this host name here and it's going to take some time it depends on the circumstances but maybe a few moments maybe a little longer for this to actually function i'm going to go ahead and pull up the page to see if i can access it now Let's see if we can work it down. All right, there we go. So before it didn't work, now it's working. If I was to grab my phone, if I was to go from a different system, it would all work and then we just set this up. So now we'll go ahead and uh, set this up. All right. I ask you a bunch of questions here and just do select whatever. All right, and you can have it send you a free license key if you want. I've got, I've had it from before, so you can just skip this if you want. So now we're in here, and then I'm going to go ahead and pull up the flow, and then I'll walk through specifically a very simple test flow for Telegram to show you how it functions. Okay, I'm back, and I'm partially completed just setting up this really basic flow here. And um, essentially, there's a Telegram trigger that will happen here. It'll go to AI agent, and then um, it can interface with ChatGPT, and then also uh, my Gmail account. So the first things first I want to show you is the key thing here is this webhook URL is that you've got this set up, and there are some steps to get Telegram configured. And I'm not going to go into detail there. If you have questions, go ahead and let me know. But in a lot of times, when I, I tried to set this up, self-hosting had port 5678. I could not get it to work with Telegram at all. There's very specific ports to use, including port 80 and 443, et cetera. So there's a test URL and a production URL. So you just want to set it up with a test URL with all that. So you get that account set up. And here, I can just test the step here. And I'm just going to go ahead and pull up Telegram. And I'm going to say test. It has a problem running the workflow because there's some other part of this that specifically is broken. So give me one second. I'm going to go back here. I'm actually going to delete these. For now. So if I go back in here, I can test the step. It's listening. And I'll say test. And you can see here the text that comes through is test here. So it's definitely, it's receiving the information. It's coming through in the appropriate format, and we can then connect this to and what I was going to do is set up. So I could say, hey, look, send an email to this email address and let them know what the weather's going to be like in Paris, France, or something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and get that configured. I'll be right back. Okay, one thing you're going to want to do in this case, I'm connecting to my Google, my Gmail. So you've got to go to this console.cloud.google.com slash API slash dashboard. There's some you know, stuff you have to click to get access to this page, but essentially what you want to make sure you do, and there's very different APIs. So there's one for Gmail, there's one for Google Drive, there's one for the calendar. And I'll give you an example from the calendar perspective just so you can see what it looks like. Um, so Google Calendar API here. So you'll want to make sure you enable it ex explicitly here. I'm using Google Calendar API as an example, but I do the same thing for Gmail. I already enabled it, so we're going to go back to Gmail. Just wanted to show you that. And you'll see instead of enable, it's just manage here. Um, so you'll want to actually go ahead and manage because you want to make sure to create credentials here. So the credentials, Gmail API is correct. Application data, next. Oh, actually, your user data. Um, and then that's the email address. You don't need that. optional stuff uh, web application is what you want to select here 
but plant one is fine. You can name this something if you want to. It's, it requires a name. It's, it's not material right now for the purposes of this demo. So we're going to create, we're going to create it. It may take five minutes or to a few hours to take effect. So I'm going to go ahead and create it. Here. And then this will be something I want to, the client ID. So I want to copy this to my clipboard. And then I'm going to go back to NN. Actually, I'm going to click done here. All right. Okay, so credentials here, web client one is what we set up, right? So we've got the client ID here, and then you've got the secret here. So this is what you'll need in order to um, authenticate the, the, uh, the end end flow for Google. So here we'll say client ID and client secret here. So basically have to go back here or go. because the screen's not big enough. Let's go ahead and make it big. Right. So client ID is here. So I just want to copy this. Yeah, this into yeah. and then we need the client secret. So I copy this and Find secret here, paste it in. Now, when I do this and I save it, successfully created, you have to go into the sign in with Google as well. It's just part of the process. For me, it says it's blocked, it's invalid, and that's probably because it does take some time for that to be created. So I'm gonna go and pause it here and we'll come back when it's functional. Okay, I had to do a little bit of troubleshooting, but I figured out there is one step that I forgot to do here, and it's actually under APIs here. So because the way we set this up and the tunneling and, and all that with, with Cloudflare, right? So we set up the public host name. When you set up this client ID here, you need to make sure that you have authorized redirect URIs set up here. And this is essentially the link that you'll use. I mean, you to enter your own domain here with a with a host name here and then you add that and save it and that will then allow you to go in and set up your client ID your secret sign in and it, it pops up another window it's out of frame here but I'm gonna go ahead and click this and then basically it goes through a verification process uh, and then you're all set so right now it says it hasn't completed the verification process so I've got to go through and do that once that's done I should go ahead and have access to this Okay, there's another critical step that I, because I'm just using a Gmail account on this particular case, there's under the Google Cloud, Google Auth platform here, under audience, you do need to add users. So I had to add that email account to the test users to authorize that user to use this. So that was a step I needed to take. And from, from there, I was able to sign in through Google and it works just fine. So I'm gonna go and exit out of here and uh, we're going to say, actually, we're going to map. So we're going to go back out. So here we're going to start testing it one by one. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up. I'm going to say send do it here. Email to list user. So say Hit send here. Okay, so it's listening for it. Oh, random initial. Let's see what we got going on here. Ah, I don't have anything in here yet. So I'm just going to do this for now. Just give it an error. Let's try it again. Again. Okay. So it goes through here, and this is the output here. Now this will in, this will go into here. You can see it's all in here. It's pulling the text, so I actually drag this text here into this field where we're defining the specific field below. 
and then a system message i just went ahead and put in here i added an option for system message so you get the email address from the message and draft an email with a weather report for tomorrow in paris france okay so we're going to test this step So now if I go to my email, I'm wondering if it actually drafted or if it sent it. It didn't. Um, and it's got this thing down below here, which you can get rid of through the, the settings here. So I can go ahead and I think it's actually in the in the Gmail thing here. So I can add an option. And I just remove this append and it in attribution. So here this is just a really super basic example of how to set this up you could do all sorts of stuff with this right you can have it pull information uh, put it into a spreadsheet you can have it interface with all sorts of applications but just a simple introduction to how to set it up create your own domain set up a tunnel on your home system be able to play around with it for free and integrate through telegram so what's cool is you just download telegram app on your phone you can integrate all sorts of personal assistant related stuff to it send me my calendar for today with all the names of the people and bios of those individuals right it could do that or it could say hey summarize any unread emails i had from yesterday you know send me the news or trigger news or whatever it is you want to do for personal assistance or it's just the Options are unlimited, and this is just a really good way to get that set up and, and hopefully start playing around with this really cool tool. Thanks.